Hi, everybody. It's Kasha Dupuy from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. I'm here for week nine, if you can believe it, of Not a Library Life Create with Kasha. Um, so today what we're going to be making is this pink flamingo. Um, so I'm going to be walking you through step by step how to do it. Don't worry if you think it's too complicated or if it looks really hard. I will walk you through every single little step that we're going to do today. Okay? Um, so we're, it's just four o'clock now. We'll wait a couple more minutes before people, um, for people to log on. Um, but remember, if you are just joining me um, to watch and you aren't going to be making the project with me today, at the exact same time, no problem. We do always load these videos um, up on our YouTube channel afterwards so that you can watch them later and make as many flamingos as you want. So um, again, it's just four o'clock now. Um, we're just getting a few more things. Uh, well, I'm getting my iPad set up so I can see what I'm doing because this has been very helpful. Um, because you know what? If you send me comments, um, I can actually see them now. So that's exciting. Um, but yes, this is, if you can believe it or not, week nine of Not A Library Life, Create With Kasha. Crazy. <laughs> nine different paintings, at least. Um, all of the other paintings we have done um, are all on our YouTube channel. So if you're looking for something to do, um, if we have another rainy day or you need to escape the heat for a bit, um, painting is always a good thing. Yeah. Um, so before we get started, I'm just going to run through um, the materials you're going to need if you're going to be joining me. Um, so if you are going to be painting at the same time, um, you're going to need something um, to a protected surface to paint on. Um, so I'm working with a big piece of watercolor paper right here. Um, you're going to need a surface to paint on. So actually, I'm going to be using a piece of watercolor paper just like so, and that's exactly what I made this one here on. Um, you're going to need water to wash your brush. You're going to need paper towel to blot your brush. You're going to need a um, drawing utensil of some kind. Um, so I mentioned in the reminder video that I was gonna try to find some colored chalk. The only piece of colored chalk I had is like this big. It's not really gonna work. So we're just gonna be using pencil and an eraser. Now I use an eraser all the time because when I'm sketching, I often make mistakes. Um, and just a reminder that if you are using pencil to just press lightly, and I'll remind you of that after because sometimes if you press too far and too deep, um, you can either get the pencil marks that are stuck in the paint um, or you can gouge the paper and your paint will kind of sit in there instead of flow. Um, okay, you also make sure you have some painting clothes, so clothes you don't mind getting paint on. So this is my, one of my painting shirts. And of course, you're going to need some paint. Um, so for today's project, what you're going to need is black and white, um, yellow and green, and then if you have a pre-mixed pink that you like to use, go ahead and use that. If you don't have a pre-mixed pink but you do have some white and, or so, sorry, some white and some red, that will work too because white plus red equals pink, right? So you can mix whatever color you wish for, whatever kind of, kind of color of pink you want for your flamingo. So we'll just wait another minute or so. Um, and just a reminder too, um, just like many of you, <laughs> I'm working at home still. Um, so I am uh, live streaming from my living room. So that means uh, my dogs are around, um, my boys are around. So it might be one of those days where we get lots of interruptions. I have a feeling today. Mm -hmm. um, also, my internet's been pretty good the last week because um, for a few weeks there it was a little bit spotty, but um, it's been pretty good. So hopefully it will stay. Um, and if I do drop for whatever reason, don't worry, I will be right back. I'll try to get on data as quickly as I can, okay? I won't abandon you, I promise. Okay, so it is 4.04. You know what? Let's get started. All right, so we have our flamingo that we're going to be making today with, um, during today's Not a Library Live Create with Kasha. Yeah, so it's a pretty easy one. Um, it's not like the paintings we've done last week where it was called a monochromatic painting. Um, we're actually using more colors and we're doing a contrasting painting. So these colors, so the pinks and the purples are actually right across, and I guess the reds technically, are right across the color wheel from the yellows and the greens. So we're making a painting with a higher contrast, right? Um, complementary colors are right across the color wheel and that's kind of what we've made here. Plus black and white, black and white always make things stand out. So let's get your surface that you're going to be painting on. And I'm going to move this over and I gave myself a, lot, a big piece of um, parchment paper to paint with. So I'm just gonna move this here and hopefully you guys can still see that right there. Okay, I'm gonna move, do a little bit of adjusting today. I had to move my, um, the arm that I used to film with and I feel like I'm all out of sorts, but I think that should be okay. All right, 
So grab your piece, your surface that you're do using, grab your pencil and your eraser or whatever um, tool you're going to use to draw with. And we're going to start by doing this line here. So we're gonna start under the chin, go this way, down and around, and go back down. So it's kind of like an S, like a backwards S. So here, scoop, big, front of the flamingo, and then we end up at the end of the tail. So I'm gonna start just about here. I'm gonna go like this. Down, big scoop, and then end like there, okay? Now the other thing about this art project and any art project is whenever I'm making it, every single way it turns out a little bit different and that's okay. That's the beauty of making an art project, right? Because we can change the way we do it every single time. So I'm gonna start from here and I'm gonna actually do the beak. So right from here, you're gonna go down and then scoop down and it's kind of like this pretty severe little drop like so. So it's following that line and then you're going to come up here, go across and get wider as you come out. So I press a little harder than I wanted to. That's okay. I'm just gonna erase that really quick. And we're going to make a beak. Now I am pressing harder with my pencil so you guys can see it on the camera. If you're sketching, um, make sure that you're not pressing so hard because you can erase yours, you can paint over yours. Um, you are right in front of yours. Mine, the camera has to kind of pick up the contrast, okay? So I knew right here that I, that's where my S started, the backwards S. So I'm gonna go like this and make a line like so. And then I'm gonna make a line that goes to the top like that. Okay, I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit while you catch, catch up. And of course, if you're watching and we're going a little tiny bit too fast, send me a note because I can see, yeah. But again, these will all be up for um, re-watching um, on our YouTube channel. So if you miss a step or you, you know, need to take a break, you can always finish up with the video. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start at the top of the head here and we're gonna go up and out like this. And we're only gonna go to about here because then we're gonna start the wing, okay? So you're gonna start here. You're gonna go a little bit, kind of scoop it up like so. Bring it back, oh, I made a little square there. Bring it back down and go to about there, okay? Amazing. So it looks kind of like a goose at this point. Now the other thing I'm noticing is I kind of made his nose or the flamingo's nose, flamingo's nose a little bit longer than the other one. You know what, I can always change that as I go in to paint, right? So this is the thing about sketching. Um, this is definitely one of the more sketching heavy projects that we've done, um, but that's okay, yeah. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do so after we have this part here, is we're gonna start here. And I'm actually gonna erase just a little bit of that because mine went really far. And we're going to make the wing. So the wing goes like this and then back down. So we're not gonna do those little things yet. I'm gonna go like this. So start here and go like so. And then here and go like so. Like that, okay? Just like that. So it's kind of like a leaf shape like an almond kind of shape, just like so. Okay, whoops, sorry everybody. And then what we're gonna do is finish off this tail before we add in this stuff here. So you're just gonna go and do some of those, little zigzags. See how mine are kind of bigger um, in the middle? That's good, and shorter as you get closer to the edges. And then here, for the wing, we're gonna follow this line and make some that kind of go like that. And see how it kind of joined back up to this top layer here? Yeah, that's what we need to do. Okay, and then if you want, you can erase these. I probably will because why not? I'll give you guys a minute or two to catch up. Just like so. Okay. Now we have to do a little kind of funny part of the flamingo. We have to do the legs. So right here, I'm going to do two little kind of cones. Kind of cones because they don't have a point. So right at the bottom, I'm gonna go like this, and then go the opposite way, and then scoop it off. Same thing here, I'm gonna go like this, the opposite way, and then scoop it off, okay? So they, like if I continue this here, it would look like a triangle, but we don't want that. We just wanna kinda of cut off the top of that triangle, but we want the wider base. And then from there, you can draw the legs. Now this one I made going this way a little bit, so it looks like he's kind of stepping backwards. This one is gonna go straight down so that he, it's like his strength, his strong leg, 
right? It's holding everything up. This one is moving and that one is standing up straight. So adding a little bit of an angle to a leg, just a tiny little bit, can actually make it look like it's alive, like it's moving. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, um, let me just double check. Oh, well, we can do this here. We can add in this part of the beak here, okay? So you can do a little, start at the, the rounded point here, and you can go like this in the middle, like pretend that there's an imaginary line here. You can bring it back down. Oh, there's an interruption. <laughs> and then you can take this part and match it up to that point right there, just like so, okay? Um, and then the next thing we need to do after that is we need to add an eye. Okay, so the eyes, um, actually flamingos have pretty small eyes, so we don't make it too big. But what we're gonna do is make a little almond shape here, pretty small, smaller than you think, like so. And then we're just gonna do a pretty big circle to fill most of that space. Okay, so there's not too much of that almond shape left here. There's just like little bits in the corner. But you can't really see a lot of flamingo, um, the whites of their eyes. Um, so don't put that in. Yeah, make it as much, as big of a circle as you can in there. Okay, so we're done the sketching for the most part. The rest of it is all blending with paints. I'm actually gonna move that over just a little bit here. And the very first thing we're gonna do is we are going to do the background. So the background, what we're gonna use first is quite a bit of water. Um, and the, just the yellow and the green. Now I'm working with a thicker paper, so I can put a lot of water on there. If you're working with something that will crumple really easily, all you have to do is take some water and make kind of like a watery paint with it. So just like that, okay? If it's a really thin paper, you can go a little bit thicker for your paint too. It's up to you, but because I have a thicker paper, I can put more water. So you wanna make two um, thin puddles of your paint if you have thinner paper. But if you have something thicker like I do, what we're gonna do is this, kind of like a watercolor technique. I'm gonna take a bunch of water and try my best to outline certain parts around the flamingo, just like so. And before it dries, I'm gonna take a little bit of some of my paints and just kind of blend it into that water, just like that. And you know what, I have some more of this here, so I'm just gonna blend it in there. If it accidentally gets on your flamingo, no big deal. Yeah, because we can paint right over it. So basically what you're gonna do is use the water and work in smaller sections and start to do some lines. Like I like doing those kind of vertical lines like that. You don't have to though, if you like it kind of a little bit more um, like fluid in your background, you can totally do that as well. Oh, that's easy, moving the chair. So just every once in a while, put in some yellow, mix in some green, just like that, into your background. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest of it over here. So just like the other steps, take your time when you're outlining, so like that, and then you can kind of go crazy in these big spots here. I'm gonna add a little bit more of green there. Oh, I almost got it right on the beak. No big deal. Yeah, it's totally cool that way. Okay, so we'll add a little bit of the yellow in there. And you want this to be kind of messy. You don't want it too pretty or too pristine because pristine means kind of like organized and planned um, because we want all the focus to be on the flamingo and not so much on the background. The background is just the background. It's like you know, setting the scene for the flamingo, you don't want it to be the main thing. Although there are some paintings I like because of the background. <laughs> so that's okay. That turns out to be one of these paintings. Not the end of the world. Oh, see, I took a little bit too much. So if you do that, just wash your brush and start to work it out with the water that's in there. Look, I'm all over the place today, crazy. Okay. Oh, and see, mine starts to dry really fast, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of water and see if I can reanimate that. So that means kind of wake it back up. Okay. Use a little bit more of this yellow right here. A little bit more green, just like so. Okay. So see, I have a really strong spot right there. I like it. I'm gonna add a stronger spot of green over here, close to the edge. 
So there is our flamingo background. Now this is a really fun technique. Um, you can totally do this for any painting. And sometimes you don't even need to have something in the foreground like a flamingo, just making backgrounds or just full canvases that are covered with this kind of, you know, soft textured background is really fun. It's a cool way to explore. Okay, so there we go. Now my watercolor paper, ooh, I put my fingers in it, huh. My watercolor paper is starting to bend a little bit. Hopefully that will go away as I continue painting. If not, oh well, it still shows up okay on the camera. <laughs> so when you're done, wash your brush pretty well because we're going to make some pink. Or if you have some pink already made, um, we're going to start with that one. So I have two different kinds. So I have a red that I can turn into a pink. Um, and I'm actually gonna use both, but this is gonna be the main color. My pre-made pink is gonna be the main color of um, my flamingo that I have. I'm just gonna supplement or kind of like support that pink with that one here. But I'm gonna make some pink. So I'm gonna take some white, just like every other time we create. I'm gonna move it to a new spot. Take some of your other color, and red's pretty strong. And then mix in one little area, just like that. And that's not dark enough. So I'm gonna take way more red than I think, than I thought the first time and mix that in. Now remember when you're mixing paint, don't mix in like a giant puddle. Try to, see I'm turning my brush and getting squeezing all that paint out of it. You wanna try to keep all your paint in one spot because if you spread it out, it's going to dry. And we don't want all this paint that we spend all the time mixing with to dry right away, right? Now I'm gonna show you a little hint if you're mixing your own pink for your flamingo. Right now it's very, very pink. Um, and flamingos kind of have that kind of corally color to them. So what you can do is take a little bit of yellow, just a tiny little bit like that, and mix that in. And it doesn't look like a big difference has happened, but once it dries, it won't have that like strawberry pink color. It'll have that like tropical coral color to it. Yeah, it's very subtle. Yeah, very, very, very subtle. Okay, so you know what? I'm gonna do a hybrid, which means I'm gonna take a little bit of both and I'm gonna mix them together. And whatever pink you have, this is gonna be your middle pink. So I'm gonna make a pink here with whatever that is on my brush mixed with that. And that's gonna be my main color of my um, flamingo. So lots of paint mixing right now, everybody. Hopefully you're having as much fun mixing paint as I am. It's one of my favorite things to do is mixing colors. Okay, so I have my pink, pretty happy with that one. And what you're gonna do um, and I'm just gonna stick with my big brush for now. But what we're gonna do is we're going to paint here, here, and here. Okay, so we're gonna follow this S. We're gonna do this a little different. We're gonna do here, there, and there. Okay, so just like before, no matter what size brush you are using, um, take your time and paint the detail parts in first, the small spots, like so. And then in the wider spots, you can go a little crazier. So I'm using a pretty big brush. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do this whole painting, except for the tiniest of details with this big brush. And if you are using a big brush, um, before you start to um, paint with me, practice using different parts of your brush. So if you're having a square brush like me, um, practice getting the finest lines that you can using the corner or the edge of the brush. Yeah, it's a good exercise. It's good for your brain and also good for your art making. Um, you can also, um, if you have a round brush, you can practice painting with the teeny tiniest tip of your brush. It takes a lot of practice. I feel more comfortable with a square brush. I don't know, I think I, cause I like the corner chisel edge a lot easier to paint with than a round brush. But I'm also kind of heavy handed, <laughs> so I think I've learned how to use a square brush better because a round brush can get really wide really fast. Yeah, I think that's why. We're gonna go with that. We'll just say that that's the reason why. <laughs> so I took all my time. If you watch my painting, I'm putting all my attention onto the edges and then in the middle, I'm kind of going crazy. Not crazy crazy, but like, you know, a little bit freer. One, because, you know, there's less chance that I'm going to accidentally get to somewhere I don't want to in the middle. That's okay. Second reason um, is because uh, I want to put all my attention there, right? That's where I want to have a nice strong outline. Oh, oh, that's it. Third reason, sorry, third reason 
is um, if we go a little crazy on the inside here, we actually get some like feathery texture, which is great when you're painting a bird with feathers, like a flamingo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just gonna get all the spots in here that I can and hopefully, yeah. And again, if it's not perfectly straight or you know, you make a little, you know, extra spot or something, feathers don't always look perfect and pristine. Like that little thing I just did, we're gonna turn that into a feather or I'm just gonna extend it out like that. I haven't decided. Well, I just made the decision right there. Okay, so you're just going to get in all those tail feathers that you have there. And that is our first layer done. Okay, so actually the next thing we're gonna do, since we have this color on our brush, is we're just gonna do the, the tops of these like little legs here. So just those pieces right there. So just like that and back up. Okay, perfect. Okay, so from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a slightly lighter shade to paint in the wing. Not super light, we don't want it to stand out and look too pastel, but I'm gonna move some of this here and I know I mix some of that in there and some of this in here. So I'm gonna make that same color as close as I can. And I knew I added a little bit of yellow. My yellow's drying, wow. Okay, a little bit of yellow in there. Now, if we wanna lighten something up, what do we need to add? Some white, right? So if you wanna make something light, add some white, but remember, take it from the edge. Because if I took it right from the middle, all that white around would have pink in it but I know, yeah, okay, over here has pink, but over here is just pure white still. So I'm gonna mix some of that in there. You don't want it to be too different, like that is probably just different enough, see? And with this new color that you've made, you're going to paint the top wing here. And actually, you know what, that's a little bit too, a little bit too light. Sometimes I find pink is really tricky to work with. There we go, that's even, you know what? See, this is what you have to do with art sometimes. You have to adjust and adjust and adjust. And I think I got some, oh yeah, I got some fresh white. So this is a brand new white I'm using. Um, and it's a little bit stronger than my last white because I ran out of white. So I had to go get some. So you're gonna do this top wing here. And it's a little bit lighter because um, one, it's closer to the light source right? So this is on top and it's closer to the light if the light was up here. And we want this to look like it's underneath. So it's a little bit shadowy beneath the wing. And it also gives a little bit of emphasis to the wing, um, which means that we're, it's going to stand out a little bit more. It's going to have a little bit more detail. Okay, so I'm trying to get my paint at the corner of my brush so that I can do the feathers here. You guys see how fast that's drying? That's crazy. Okay, so we are just about down in that part of the wing. Hmm, let's see if I can, oh, you know what? Look, if you make uh, it not sharp enough, like pointy enough, you can just extend it. And look, I'm gonna make that one go off the end of my page, totally fun. So I put a lot of paint in this brush, so it's starting to like wanna fight a little bit, so it's like, no, I don't want to stay in one place. Ah. Anyway, okay. So subtle difference, right? Dark part here, lighter there. So now that you have a little bit of the light on your brush still, we're gonna put some highlights, or some, I guess, low lights <laughs> into um, our, our flamingo. We're gonna start to build up the texture and make it look a little bit more 3D. So take this color you have, it'll be a little bit lighter, and watch where I'm going to put some. Ready? So we're going to start here. So just under the bottom side of the beak and just do some feathery bits, just like that. Okay, and see how lightly I pressed? I didn't do this with my brush. I did like this with my brush, right? Nice and feathery. And it's very subtle. It's actually probably disappearing. You probably can't even see it that long on the camera. So we started a little bit here and then we're gonna go at the back of the neck and you're going to put a little bit there. Okay, and then you're gonna start up at the top of the head, and you're going to put some, and look, I accidentally went on the background. No big deal. 
Actually, that was one of the parts when I was making this demo that I liked the best because it kind of, I was working really fast and it kind of bled into the background, but I love that. That's my favorite thing. And I didn't mean to do that, but that's my favorite. <laughs> that happens with art sometimes. The thing that you love the most was an accident. So we put a highlight up here, okay? I'm gonna do another one because so you can see. One here, one here, and then we're gonna put some on the feathers. So here we're just gonna go like this. Just feather it in like that, okay? Now what you can do is take this color, whatever you have left of it, move it to a new spot, and we're gonna make it even a little bit lighter. So take a little bit more white, blend that in there, and it shouldn't be like super white pastel because we're gonna build that up still. It should be pretty, you know, kind of medium light pink like so, okay? And we're actually gonna do highlights in the exact same spots again. So watch this. We're gonna start here. We're gonna let this one, using the tiniest bit of your brush, go like that, okay? And then you're gonna do the same thing here. And then you're gonna do the same thing here. Now with this lighter color, you're actually going to go right under the eye, just like that, kind of feather it in, like so. And also, because we've made this a little bit lighter, it means it's lighter than the wing color, so let's go and do some highlights on the wing. So you're gonna use this color, and you're going to go uh, right at the edge of that wing right there. You can go right along the bottom. Then take a little bit more, and you're going to go right along the top, like so. And see, I'm doing like two layers of that. And then right here, you're gonna start at the edge and you're gonna follow that into the middle. So we're gonna contour the feathers. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna do the same thing here. Okay, so, and you know what? We can put a little bit here too, because some of those feathers would be catching the light on the tail. So you can go ahead and add some of that in there. Okay. So we're building up the layers of our flamingo. So the next thing we're gonna do is actually we're gonna go into some dark. So we're going to, you can wash your brush if you like. Actually, it's probably a good idea to wash your brush because there's a lot of white in that pink we just used. Um, and sometimes if we add it to make a darker color, it'll turn it kind of gray and it will lose that brightness that you want um, it to kind of to pump up with, right? So we're gonna take some of our main color. So I'm gonna go with this pink. You know what, I'm actually gonna move that right in here because that's drying. So I'm gonna use whatever I can from here. I know that's pretty close to my medium pink, so I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow. Now, to darken, we're not gonna use black. We are going to use green, okay? Trust me on this, it's pretty neat. So, you're going to take just a little bit to start with. It depends how strong your green is. I'm only using a tiny little bit like so, okay? And then what you're gonna do is mix it into that pink that you moved over and see how it makes kind of like a purpley, you know, purpley dark pink without, it's got like a little bit of a gray undertone, but it's not like black gray, right? Like it's not like super strong, it's just subtle. It looks like there's a little bit of a shadow on the pink. And I'm gonna make that a little stronger so you guys can see. But see how it kind of, yeah, it's a really cool, darker color without needing black and white to lighten and dark. So once you have your color, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna start down here on these little legs. So I'm gonna use my brush like this to do like little um, kind of jump marks. And right here, I'm gonna do like this and just kind of jump like so. And I'm using the tiny bit of my brush and I'm just gonna jump on one side. So I didn't do it on this side of that little I guess drumstick part, <laughs> I did it on the front part here, okay? So just like that. And then from there, we're going to build up our shadows. So let's start from the bottom and work our way up, okay? So we did there. Then right above that, you're going to feather some spots and you're going to kind of blend it up and into that front part here, like so, okay? So take a little bit more and I'm gonna do a line here like that, okay? We're gonna go into the feathers just a little bit and try to maybe stick to the bottom of the feathers, although there's really no rhyme or reason. But if you stick to one side of the feathers, it will look 
a little bit more realistic, although it's not a super realistic painting, but we know it's a flamingo. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest shadow we wanna have um, is here, is under the wing. And actually, we're gonna make that a little bit darker down here too, but we want this one to be the strongest one. So you're gonna follow right along that line. Try not to get too much of this dark on the lightest spots, but we're gonna go like this and feather that in there, okay? And it's okay if it gets much darker under here because you know what, this wing is pretty big and it's causing a big shadow, right? And don't worry, we can add stuff later to, if it's too dark, we can, I'll show you how to um, blend that back in. Okay, so we've done the legs, we've done the bottom part here, we've added a line, we've gone into the feathers, and we've gone under the wing. I'm actually gonna darken that up with one more layer of this. You don't have to, but mine was a little, little light. Then you're gonna take your dark and you're going to just do this little part here where the wing meets the neck and see how it makes the wing stand out even more. That's awesome, that's a good little trick. Then we're going to make the dark section here. So there would be a shadow because the top of the head is covering, you know, there's usually a shadow at the bottom of your chin, under mine anyway. So you're gonna go like this, and you're going to go like so. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is do a little bit of a shadow here. So remember how we did that light spot here? You're just gonna take a little bit, just a tiny little bit and put it there to kind of contour that cheek. Think of it as putting like bronzer, kind of. I don't really know what I'm talking about there, but <laughs> putting a little bit of bronzer on your flamingo. Um, also, if it's too dark, don't worry, we can go back in with light and add that back in, okay? Now this is where you can take a look at your flamingo and see where else on this part you can add, you want some dark. So you know what, here's a little bit flat. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a detail in there. And here it's like not enough going on, so I'm just gonna add an overlap to that one, like so. Make a little bit there. And then we're gonna work on the wing next. You know what, I'm gonna put some right here too, just like so. But I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and that's for two reasons. One, because I can build up and look nice and soft. Two, if I make a mistake, it's not that much paint, right? You can kind of start to see as you like or as you go, if you like it or not. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is build up some of these. So remember we made these lines here, right underneath them, make a line just like so just really lightly. It doesn't have to be the full distance of, um, of your flamingo, or that line, sorry, but that will add contrast. That will make those lights look even lighter, just like so. My dark is starting to, to dry up, just like so. Okay, there we go. We're starting to make our little flamingo more 3D. So we need to make an even darker version of this color. So let's do that. So I'm gonna have to make mine because mine is, you know, drying because of course it would. So I need to add some, ooh, look at that red. It's like almost totally dry. The thing is, if you have to make a whole bunch of different pinks for this flamingo, it's just gonna make your painting look more awesome. It's gonna make it look like you were, you know, got bored of one color of, um, of pink and you decided, oh, you know what? I'm gonna explore and make even more. Ooh, accidental rhyming, my favorite, okay. So to make it darker, I'm gonna start with my green and I'm gonna mix it in. Oh, that went pretty dark pretty fast, which I love. That's a really nice purpley like plum kind of color. So, wow, that happened the first, first try. <laughs> so we're gonna go just like that and we're gonna make a darker version. Doesn't matter how dark, just make sure it's darker than the one you used before. And what we're gonna do is we're actually going to paint in the legs, just like so. Just like that. And then we're actually gonna add some even darker, even greener, high, or I guess highlights or shadows to this to make them look um, kind of bumpy or kind of textured. Like, you know, if you've seen like chicken feet or like bird feet, they're not really smooth or pretty, right? They're a little bit rough looking. Also that was Finn shaking. Yeah, he wants my attention. He's like, hey ma, you're busy painting, but I want pets right now. So that's what he's doing. So with this darker one, and I'm actually gonna make it just a touch darker. You don't have to, I'm just noticing on camera, it might not be dark enough. 
We're gonna do um, shadows in the same spots as we did before. So you're gonna start here and do just a few on the legs, like so. We're going to add another feathery layer here and anywhere that you have dark, especially under the wing, you can start to build that up, okay? So you don't have to follow exactly where I'm putting it, but wherever, the only spots that you really should are at the bottom of your flamingo right here, because that'd be the darkest part furthest away from the light source and under the wing here. The rest of it, you can go in and add wherever you want it to look a little further, you know, a little deeper. And I'm gonna do some under the chin too, just like so. Okay, so just like so, that's where we're getting. Um, so let's see, we have made our legs and everything here. Um, you're putting in your shadows where you want them to go. I'm just gonna put one more in here. There's a little bit too much of a break there, but I'm just gonna soften that up. Plus we're gonna add some lights after, so it'll be good. Um, and you know what, I'm gonna take a little bit of this and put it right up here. Oops, that was maybe too much. But look, no problem. Okay, so look, this is a good example. Actually, I don't mind that after I blended it, but if it's too much, what you can do, um, because we're done with this dark, you can wash your brush, make sure it's pretty dry, take some of your main pink, so I have some right here, and just kind of put it back on top, like so. Yep, this is a painting that has lots of blending, um, which is a lot of brush strokes over and over and over again, but that means you can kind of put things in, take them away, whatever you like. Yeah, it's kind of cool that way. Okay, so we're gonna switch gears for a second. If you have a small brush, get that one ready. If you're using the same brush as before, no problem. But we're going to make a gray, like a light gray purple for the beak. So I have some of this color here, the dark that I just used. I'm gonna scoop whatever I can over here Take some white, and we're gonna make a pretty light purpley gray. So see how like it's pretty like like a pastel uh, pastel purple gray, and all you're gonna do is paint this beak. And yes, it's going to look super weird for a bit, but it's a layer that makes this look pretty 3D and pretty realistic afterwards. It adds depth to the beak and makes it look like it's more than just white. So you're gonna paint this whole thing in here. If you accidentally go a little bit higher, go a little bit lower, if you get it on the flamingo's um, kind of cheek there, no big deal. Oh no, see what I did? I got excited and I put some black in. So I'm going to try that again. I'm gonna take some of this, move it here, take some of that, move it in. Take a little bit of water because my paint is super dry. And you're going to continue painting in that beak. See? Sometimes those things happen with art, no big deal. I think it was because this brush was feeling neglected. <laughs> okay, so and notice how I kind of went over the end of there, that's okay too. Don't worry about that. Um, okay, so let's add some of those dark spots to um, the flamingo's feet, the legs. So we're gonna take some pink and I'm just gonna take my regular middle pink Take some green, mix it together, and you're gonna get like a really dark purpley, um, like purpley brown kind of color. And all you're gonna do on the legs is a few little dots, up and down dashes that go this way. They look like this, okay? So I'm not pressing hard, and you can put them, you know, kind of anywhere on the legs you want. And I'm gonna put one up here and one up there. And here, you know what? I will bring it closer to the camera so you guys can see. So see how I put those little dashes in there? Yeah, from far away, they look, um, you know, in a very specific spot, but really I'm just kind of putting them on there so that you can see and that they have a depth to them, okay? And I'm learning with this iPad, so sorry if it's not perfectly adjusted, but that's all you're gonna do. So before we add in the light part to our flamingo, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to take some black with your fine point brush. So get your small brush with you if you have it. 
Um, and also this step, if you don't have a really fine point brush and you want to do the details with marker afterwards, um, you can totally do that, especially for the eye and especially for this part here when we get there. But I'm going to use a brush um, and some black paint for the eye. You can get a little bit of black on the end of your brush. And notice when I get paint on my brush, I don't fill my whole, all the bristles with that paint. I just put a little bit on the edge there. See, I'm just using a tiny little bit. And you'll see me do like this a lot, kind of dab it. It's so I don't overload my brush because it's really hard to paint with a giant glob of paint on your brush. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to outline the eye and try to get the paint mostly on the white of that part because we don't want to see a lot of white. You don't want to cover it all in. Like a little bit is good to keep because it looks like it's alive and shiny. So I did the outline there. Now I'm going to make my circle as big as I can and outline those spots. See how I'm leaving just a teeny itsy bitsy tiny bit of white right at the edges there. Okay, just like so. Then what I'm gonna do is leave a little section here that kind of follows the curve of the eye and I'm just going to paint the rest of that in like so. Okay, just like that. So from far away, it looks like that shine is following the contour of the eye, the roundness of the eye those tiny little white spots make it look like it's shiny. Yeah, so don't think of necessarily them, don't think of them necessarily as like the whites of an eye, because I don't think birds really have whites that we can see. Um, think of it more of like a shine, so you know that the eye is glossy and alive, right? Okay, so let's go into the white part of our beak. So what we're gonna do is use whatever brush you're most comfortable with, and I'm gonna go back to my flat brush here, my small flat brush, and you're gonna take some straight up white. If you get a little bit of pink in it or like a little bit of um, this gray, that's okay too. But watch what we're gonna do. So you're going to start here and you're gonna work this paint up, but you're going to kind of let it get rough just before it touches the flamingo's head. So you know, I'm gonna take a whole bunch more actually. And it's going to be really white down here and I'm gonna extend that because I kind of went past there a little bit. But see how it doesn't touch, like there's this like little fine deep line here of this gray purple that we made, that's important. Cause see how on this one, um, I left it alone right there. Yeah, I only brought the white up, but I stopped before I got to the pink part of the uh, flamingo's head. That's what we wanna do too. And yes, this totally does look weird until we get the black spot in, so don't worry. It will, if you're like me, you'll be like, oh, I made a mistake, but, you didn't, it just, you have to be patient and let this kind of come together on its own. Yep. Sometimes art requires lots of patience and trust in yourself to know that, you know, as long as you're following the steps and doing the right thing or exploring in a way that you're having fun with, you will make some awesome stuff. Yeah. And the thing with these projects is that if you don't, they are available for you to watch again and you just try again. As I say every week, I don't just wake up knowing how to paint. It takes lots of years of practice and practice and practice. So don't be afraid or don't worry if it doesn't look exactly like you want it to the first time around, okay? So we put that white on there. And since we have white on our brush, um, after you finish that part, take some more white, move it to a new spot. Cause we're gonna do some of the highlights on the feathers. Cause right now, it looks pretty awesome, but it's missing some of those shines right now, right? So we're gonna make some really, 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 really light pink. So whatever pink you have left, take a small scoop of it and mix it with that white, because we don't really want it to be straight white. We want it to kind of be like a really, really light pink, like so. And then what you're gonna do is go over some of the lightest spots, and this is gonna make it pop. So ready? So I'm gonna start here. And I'm gonna put some of these lines, and see I'm feathering, just like so. There's one. And you know what, I'm gonna put some here because I want this, I see like a light spot there and I'm gonna make that kind of pop up like so. And then I'm gonna put definitely some here. So I'm gonna follow my lights that I made before. And see how lightly I'm pressing with my brush? I'm not going 
You're not pressing hard at all. And if I go over some of those dark spots, that's okay too. And my brush is starting to run out of paint and that's actually a technique called dry brushing. Um, so don't be like, oh, I'm running out of paint. You know, work with it, build it up. There's actually lots of paint on your brush still and you can use it just like so. And that texture, that kind of like broken line sometimes you get when you're using a dry brush is really cool. Oh, I went, I crisscrossed. Try to follow your lines as best you can, like so, okay? And I'm gonna go and put a little bit of these light highlights here, right there. And you know what, we'll put a few in here as well because we want it to look like your flamingo is shiny. And then you're gonna go back on the neck right there and bring that up. My paint's getting a bit dry. I don't suggest adding too much water to your paint in this step because it can kind of make everything bleed a little bit too much. Not actually bleed, but like um, make it look, you lose the fuzziness that you want. So I'm actually gonna tap it there. And I'm gonna do some right up here and follow the contour. And I'm gonna put some back right under the eye, just like so. And I'm gonna put some here. And I'm gonna put a little bit there. I think I'm getting a little carried away, but that's okay. It's just because it's really fun. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Okay. So we've added the light to our flamingo. All right. Now, if you've put too much and you're like, oh, I don't really like that, it's too light right here. Guess what? You're gonna go back with a brush. I'm gonna go back to my big brush because it was matching um, the the texture of before. And I'm gonna take some pink if it doesn't all dry. Do you guys see that? It's totally dry. Wow. Okay, so let's move some here. And I know I'm spending a lot of time mixing paint in front of you guys. I'm sorry, everybody. Here we go. Okay, so we got our medium pink here again. And you know what? See how that turned too yellow? Because I took too orange because I took too much. I'm actually just gonna work with this because we're not gonna use too much more of that. And if it's somewhere too light, you know what? You're gonna go and just kind of soften that, kind of blend it in like so. Okay, so here's a little bit too light, there's a little bit too light. We're just gonna take some of that away. Okay. So after you're done that spot, that part, if it's something you feel like you need to do, you know, soften some of those highlights. Yeah, that makes a little bit of a difference. I like that. The last, the last thing we're gonna do is the black on the beak. So you can wash your brush, dry it. And for this one, you can use a marker. So if you're gonna wait to use um, a you know, fine point marker that you have later, then no problem. But this is what you're gonna do. Um, if you're joining me with a brush to do it right now, this is the step. So you're gonna take straight up black and you're going to make that triangle here. So we're going to start in the middle Follow your line down, make it pointy like so. And then come along this way, bring it down, okay? And then you can just paint it in like that. And add a little bit of water because all my paint is dry, my goodness. Okay, so take your time with that. I'm going a little bit faster because you don't necessarily want to sit and watch me paint for hours or anything. And then from that point there, what you're going to do is take your line and bring it right up into that corner here of the beak. So right just like that. Okay. Amazing. And then the last thing we're going to do with this black right now, actually there's two things we can do and they're all little dashes, little, um, little marks like this. So you can go like, they're kind of like this little tiny dots or dashes. Um, what we're gonna do is right along this line here, we're gonna do some little ones. And you know what, actually, I was thinking, looking at this earlier, you might wanna make it just a little, like a charcoal gray. So not super black, you can add just a little bit of white. It's pretty dark, you probably won't notice a difference on mine, but you're just going to add some detail like this. So when I practiced this before, I did like a straight line and it looked kind of like funny. It looked very like cartoon book, or sorry, coloring book kind of cartoon. So adding the dots here made it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit softer, like so. And then the other spot that you can do that is if you wanna give 
your flamingo some tiny little lashes, not huge lashes because I don't think that they actually have big lashes, but I always get questions about, can we add eyelashes to my painting? And of course you can, it's your painting. You can do whatever you wish. Okay, so that is the flamingo. Um, you know what, there is one more thing I'm gonna show you. Oops, as I throw water on my painting. Um, there's one more thing I'm gonna show you that made the difference for mine. If you look right here, there's this really kind of like dark line, but it's the main color of your flamingo, but because I had so many highlights up there, it's the same case here. So I'm gonna take, with your fine point, take a little bit of your main pink and follow just up here like that, the smallest line you can make, just like that. And I don't know why, maybe it's a contrast thing because we're painting in contrast, but it makes it kind of stand out a little bit more. Same with here, like I didn't do it on the part here, but it's a little feathery, so you know what? I'm going to add a line just right here. You don't have to, it just ups, um, ups the contrast a bit. I'm finding that I need to do that on mine. And you know what? We're gonna add one here. Okay. And if you want, you can take your fine point and just put some of these longer strokes into your feathers. They're very subtle, but they do make a difference. Also, if you have somewhere that's a little bit too light or too dark, like right here, if I put one or two of those lines, it leaves that big chunk of the darker the light, but it softens it that little bit more. It's kind of a cool after, kind of doctoring up technique. Okay, so that is how we make a flamingo. Yes, so thank you for joining me. Um, that was a longer one, but look, all those steps, and look what you can make. Um, so um, just like I mentioned before, all of these videos will be up on our YouTube channel afterwards. Um, if you ever have any comments or questions or feedback, um, please send me an email um, at uh, kdupuy at nautilpl.org. I'm trying to get that always to focus. Oh, hi, Sandra. Thank you. <laughs> um, nice to see you, kind of. <laughs> um, so yes, if you have any questions, feedback, um, something you'd like us to paint or like me to show you how to paint, please send me an email, kdupuy at nautilpl.org. Um, and yes, these will be up on YouTube. And thank you so much for joining us. This is week nine, if you can believe that. Crazy, nine weeks of people joining in to paint with me. Definitely humbling. And I appreciate every single one of you who tunes in to watch. We also love to see what you create. Um, so if you've made your flamingo or flamingos, um, please tag us in any photos you post um, at Not A Library, um, and we will share them on our page because we always like to see what you create. And it's also good for me as a teacher because if I see um, you know, something that maybe you had a problem with or you tell me that you had a problem, it helps me learn as an educator and as a teacher, right? Helps me think about how I teach you. Um, so yes, thank you everybody again, and we'll see you next week. Um, I have some really cool ideas. I have um, someone actually gave me, someone emailed me and sent me a whole list of stuff that they're interested in. So I'm currently experimenting with those um, and seeing what we can do. And one that I'm really excited about is a chameleon. So maybe there'll be a chameleon coming up. Okay, otherwise, get outside, enjoy the rest of this beautiful day, um, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you all next week, everybody. Bye.